kids, I'm a super sensitive human and I've given a lot of garden tours so today I figured I'd give you a tour of the inside of my house which is about 50% clean right now because I'm having holiday house guests coming. Um, if you watch my chronic fatigue video you'll understand why I'm not really very good at housekeeping. I have a lot of pain and a lot of uh, fatigue that keeps me focused on only doing the most important things which often isn't cleaning but uh, I'll show you a little bit about my things and uh, my lifestyle odd things that I might do and maybe you'll relate to some of them so we'll go in uh, I guess this is the front door to the laundry room got my shopping bags inner tubes for tubing down the local streams. The type of laundry detergent that I used to use in the garden before it ran out, that's special uh, plant friendly laundry detergent because uh, the washing machine empties into the garden here. But the seventh generation kind doesn't seem to kill the plants either so uh, I've been using that one because it's easier to come by. Uh, I don't think the plants like this other one. I don't think that they like this Trader Joe's powdered laundry detergent here. There's a lot of mouse shit down here. I think um, I killed about 20 mice in a few day spree. After a while of letting them get out of control and uh, haven't cleaned that up yet, I believe they must come from behind the washer dryer somewhere which I haven't investigated obviously the most ef efficient thing to do would be to uh, stop the mice from coming in the house wherever they're getting into it. In the cupboard here we have uh, a bunch of snorkels and stuff. I used to live in Florida before I moved here so I still use all my snorkel gear out here though um, believe it or not. I have some big chunks of chaga left still from four years ago when I lived in Pennsylvania. If you don't know what chaga is, it's a mushroom. It's a medicinal mushroom that makes a good tea. So, still make tea out of that. Here's my sign from many years ago, six, seven years ago when I was a practicing herbalist briefly. Wild Hearts Healing was my business. The breaker box, which I turn off uh, the breaker to the master bedroom where I sleep every night just in case uh, the EMF is draining me. Seems like a good precaution, doesn't take much effort to turn it off. Uh, you know where your head's up against the wall in the electromagnetic field of the wiring and the walls. Some people believe that that is uh, not good for your biology, especially when you're sleeping there for eight hours a night with your head up against the wall. So I do that. The kitchen, which is usually really, really filthy, but it's only like 10% filthy right now. Got my Omega juicer. This is a good one. This is a probably eight years old or so now and it's still chugging along. Got my whoa, brain octane oil for you biohacker type fans out there. I don't find that the brain octane seems to burn my stomach lining sort of. I don't really, not so sure about that. MCT oil stuff seem, seems to like really dehydrate me and uh, hurt my stomach lining. So I'm a little too sensitive for the MCT oil teas, herbal teas, legumes. We've got a plethora of vitamins and supplements here. Uh, a lot of these are empty. I'm not taking them right now. Um, the only one I really take right now is vitamin C chewables and uh, this stuff 
Progon BL4X is progesterone. That helps me a lot with menstrual cramps. It really is one of the few supplements that I notice a difference of. Fruits and vegetables. Kabocha squash, that's my favorite kind. Persimmons that are too overripe for my taste right now. Oranges, kiwis, bananas, a jerf real food bar. This is from my favorite podcaster, Sean Croxton, who used to do health podcasts, but now he does like success podcasts, self-development. Um, I like both of them, both of his podcasts. He made this bar, which is pretty good. Chestnuts, the Berkey filter. Berkey is a famous water filter brand. If you don't know that, it's like carbon filter. So you put the water in here and it slowly drips through these filters. But it's not good enough here in the desert for removing the salty taste from the water. So I don't use it. I get fill up these jugs with reverse osmosis water that I get at the gas station or if I'm really um, into it I go to the spring water in uh, Oak Creek Canyon but that's an hour away so I don't do that very often these days but the reverse osmosis tastes better and uh, more neutral than putting it through the Berkey filter This is basically my purse. Some women have a purse. I have a little cooler that I'm always carrying my food around because I can't eat out and I just put my wallet and my phone and stuff in my cooler. Um, these are my seeds. You see my garden videos. Here's where all the action happens seed wise. I had them all nicely arranged by like month of planting but now they're kind of messed up. The table itself is uh, the tool chest so those don't really look like tools but there's tape and uh, batteries and things on this side there's some tools in this part I need to empty out this and clean out the drawers because there's some mold growing in them especially this third one I never opened because it smells moldy inside underneath is the Recycling, here's my raw juice habit. All these green bottles are bottles of green juice, cold press green juice. In the refrigerator, don't have a lot in here right now. Apples, steaks, this is a new product I'm gonna try water buffalo herb breakfast sausage. It's got water buffalo, salt, thyme, sage, rosemary, collagen casing, so hopefully that's good. Here's some of the chaga tea I was talking about. Here's a, another fun product. Beef head cheese from US Wellness Meats. Beef, beef hearts, beef tongues, sea salt, white pepper, onion, powder, coriander. I have had this before and uh, you know, I don't know what to compare it to you if you've never eaten like a product like uh, like a liverwurst or some, some sort of natural organ meat sausage. Avocados. Freezer, mostly We've got packages of bone broth, frozen okra, frozen smoothie products. Put my face in here for a little while. Um, this is the dining room. The, this is where most of the vlogging, blogging action happens right now. On um, this old computer here. This is a Dell M6400 from like 2008 or something that uh, was Nick's and uh, he's letting me use it, which is good. I hate it because it's really loud and it's really um, kind of whiny and hot and heavy and <laughs> usually I like hot and heavy stuff, but not the computer. Um, 
but I have to use it basically because I got I tried to get this new one here's a fancy you know HP worth a thousand dollars I only bought this for 800 some dollars but usually it's like can be up to 1500 um, 4k screen and everything and I just can't use it because it kills my eyeballs like um, it just dries them out and they hurt and they hurt for days after even if I even after I stop using it they still hurt so I'm gonna have to send this back I think and just keep using this one even though it's uh, annoys me and is a lot slower and harder to a little bit harder to video edit it works which is good got my plants mother of thousands these plants grow like crazy. Let me get like little babies. Uh, <laughs> here's the way I eat. Here's a, my one plate. I don't have very many plates and stuff because I don't like to, well, I won't wash them if I, I have a, I'll just keep like using them and not washing them if I have a bunch of plates and the dishwasher doesn't work because my landlord's an ass, so. Um, here we have my steak from two nights ago. This is the steak left over from two nights ago. And this is the steak that's left over from last night. And I just kind of leave it there thinking that I'll, like maybe I'll eat it. Um, <laughs> if I don't eat it, I'll feed it to Mercy. So here's the end of the house where Nick used to have his bedroom and his office where he made his 3D printed gun parts and he had his printers in here there's a bathroom here too that I don't use this one um, so here's the now it's a guest room and I uh, <laughs> constructed my friends coming with her uh, like six seven year old daughter so I uh, used all the empty coolers in the room to uh, construct an igloo-like fort for them. Hopefully they'll like it. A Christmas-themed guest room. You see, I uh, see what I did here. I put the Pittsburgh penguin in the igloo. The other bedroom is uh, empty box room. So if you want to move in, uh, let me know. Uh, just some desk stuff. Here's my bookshelf. They say that a person's bookshelf tells you a lot about them, but I think that my bookshelf tells you more about who I used to be because I don't ever touch these books anymore. They're just kind of our decoration. They're mostly, uh, field guides and books about herbs and things. Uh, there's all the editions of the Hunger Game. The only ones I use are like these hot springs guides here. There's a couple things from my PhD program, yoga mat. I do use that from time to time. I have a big cobweb problem in the house. There's a lot of daddy long legs and they don't, they make big cobwebs all over and I don't take down the cobwebs because I want to suck them up with the vacuum but then I never do that because the vacuum is really loud and uh, obnoxious to drag around. There's a shop vac over there. That's the only vacuum I have is a shop vac. And if I don't suck up the spiders and just sweep down the webs, we'll just build new webs. So instead I just don't do anything. My plants, my indoor plants, some of these you've seen outside. This is my tobacco tree is growing really happily indoors. My basil's re-sprouting indoors. My um, tangelo tree is ripening indoors, but it's not happy. Look how many leaves it lost on the far side of the window. I have to put it in my bedroom because my bedroom's south facing and this is east facing. And we got the living room, probably the nicest room. Um, let me tell you about the stuff on my shelves, I guess. A lot of it's stuff I made back when I was into primitive skills stuff. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I used to be a uh, 
semi well known anarchist rewilder person, primitive skills enthusiast, survival skills enthusiast. So we got like baskets and stuff. I didn't even make all these, although some of these are my friends, this stuff I got from them or traded, but the big skull I um picked up a long time ago in Oregon on this big went well, on this big 16 mile hike along the Rogue River to look for this property that uh, my boyfriend's family might have owned sometime back in the day and uh, hiked so far and uh, the last mile, like mile 15, I picked up this skull and carried it back to the car. Obsidian pieces from back when I was into flint napping. This is my dad's Boy Scout troop. Matches the black and white hat. These oil lamps I would be well prepared in a power outage but I never use them because the scent of the lamp oil is burning is too much for my chemical sensitivity these days. I used to be able to stand it and not really notice it but now it's like so strong. These are photos of my grandfather and his friends. Stones and knickknacks. In these drawers are all my school stuff from my PhD program. There's just stacks and stacks of journal articles from on different topics. There's Mercy's bed. Mercy stays outside these days most of the time because that's what she likes to do. She just uh, likes to live outside. So, but she comes in to sleep now that it's cold. This basket I made. Um, many years ago. This is the first basket I ever made. Uh, quite a quite a endeavor to make such a large basket. Actually it's not the first basket. It's the first one that I have. I made my uh, one time I made my boyfriend's mom a basket for her chicken eggs. That was the first willow basket I made. So I guess this is like the second one. This skull is one of my favorite ones up here because of the nice patina. It was buried in mud in a pond to rot the skin off of it and uh, that's what color it turned so it's pretty cool. It has like this black layer at the where it was starting to stick out of the water and then where it's uh, sort of out of the mud it's just a normal color. All these skulls are from Pennsylvania mostly they used to live near a roadkill graveyard where they dump stuff, so um, like a lot of the deer and this bear are from the roadkill graveyard. The cow's just from like a farmer's woodlot. The wild, this one's a wild boar from Florida. I have two of those. Here's the boar with, with a jaw on it. My friend Michael made me this uh, cell phone for a cell phone case years ago. This is a hat that I wove. Alligator face from Florida. This is a bull frog hunting spear. This is um, my grandfather carved that. This is a drum that I made in a workshop many 11 years ago or so. Bedroom, of course you've seen this in videos. My nightstand's made of rocket boxes. As far as the things on my nightstand, we've got the amber book light. If you're into biohacking, you know all about Preserving your melatonin at nighttime by using amber colored lights instead of blue, blue shaded, blue colored lights, blue spectrum, which is like kind of normal, even if you use the incandescent bulbs like I do. They still uh, got more blue that confuses your body about what time of day it is. Mask, earplugs, good stuff for a super sensitive human. Kindle that's uh, 
paper white kind that has no colors, that's also a lot better for your eyes and uh, electromagnetic type sensitivity. Headphones, you can tell I'm not a music person because this is the best type of headphone I have, these crappy headphones. Bulletproof coconut charcoal, that's when I feel toxic, I take some of that. Seraphos, um, I have been taking this to lower cortisol, it seems to help with my anxiety, not sure. Chapstick, this is funny because this is like not a super sensitive thing, you know, it's flavored, it's artificial, but that's the one I like. I had some like beeswax kinds that uh, are a lot more irritating to to my sensitivities, like a lot more, they just have more smell and they don't feel good. Half eaten apple, half eaten larvar, jar of honey for uh, Sometimes my adrenaline spikes in the middle of the night and getting sugar in quickly helps bring it down because it's like a blood sugar issue. We have another amber light in uh, the headboard lights in the closet. We have my many flannels. One, two, three, four. My bow, which I said I was going to start shooting again and then totally like dislocate my shoulder and never did, but I got all the arrows for it. Nick convinced me to buy the super fancy arrows, like $5 a piece or six, seven, eight dollars a piece instead of $2 because uh, he said it wasn't worth shooting. I wouldn't, I would never know how accurate I was if I didn't have a good arrow. We have my prized bandana collection. So if you watch Mercy, she always has a different colored bandana on every couple uh, videos. I'll change her color out when it gets gross and dirty. So when I go to Walmart, these are always 99 cents bandanas. So if they have a new color at Walmart, then I'll pick up some new bandanas for her and me. I blow my nose on them. So there's usually a couple bandanas around the house because uh, here in Arizona, the, the boogers get real crusty. My uh, Kill Your Civilization hat from my rewilding days when I didn't believe in civilization. Chicken lamp. High heels that I never wear anywhere ever. Here's what my friend Wesley would call a perfect paradox of Emily. I have this slutty tight blue dress in the closet next to this dirty old life jacket. Here's a locker box that has become a junk table. Right now it's topped with several functional medicine lab tests that I am uh, going to take sometime soon. Mycotoxin kit, a heavy metals kit, that'll be a second time for that one to see if I've improved. GI map, that'll be a second time to see if I've improved. That's di digestive uh, parasites and stuff. This one is hormones and Cortisol, that'll be a second time when I take that one. And uh, this one's organic acids, which I've taken before, but this is a different brand. But that shows you uh, all kinds of things like neurotransmitters and vitamin mineral status and uh, how your gut is doing. And this is my flute. I'll play you a flute song sometime. This is a Native American flute that I made in a workshop many years ago. I also turn off the uh, Wi-Fi when I sleep just in case that's affecting my health. Bathroom. Uh, we got more skulls from uh, Pennsylvania. These ones are like, I don't know, a trapper or something dumped a bunch of animals in a place. So that's what a lot of these ones are from. Trappers. My friend Chris gave me this hawk one, but we got raccoons, beaver, uh, coyotes, foxes. Here's, here's the beaver jaw. Now watch how far it comes out. <laughs> That's how long the beaver tooth is inside the beaver jaw. 
it keeps growing because it wears down when they eat the wood. As for what kind of products I use, bamboo toothbrush, powdered toothpaste powder that's got clay and peppermint stuff in it, witch hazel, unscented soaps, vitamin C, this if you don't know, uh, vitamin C like binds to chlorine so if you throw it in the tub it'll help bind the chlorine and you won't have that chlorine smell or that chlorine soaking into your pores. Um, true fact, they use it in fish tanks for that reason so it really is a thing. So that concludes the tour of my house. You're probably thinking that it doesn't look filthy at all but that's because you can't see the dust and grime and cobwebs and dog hair that are coating everything.